In one of the Quranic verses, Noah spoke to God with the expression, My Lord. He said, My Lord, I have called my people day and night. Regarding this, Ibn Arabi says, And Noah said, My Lord, Rabbi, he didn't say, My God, Ilahi. For Lord has the attribute of stability. Well, God has the attribute of many names because every day he does something different. By Lord Noah means the stability in variation, for the only real existence belongs to him. In that brief passage, Ibn Arabi put an emphasis on the distinction and relationship between God, Allah, and Lord, Rob. While Allah, God, is Al-Haq who never stops changing and transforming himself from moment to moment in accordance with the names. Rob, the Lord, is Al-Haq as revealed through a specific concrete name. The Lord has a rigid stability in that it is Al-Haq in a specific aspect, constrained and decided by a specific name or attribute appropriate for the situation. As a result, there is a very special relationship between the Lord and man. Specifically, whenever man prays to God or makes a request of him, he must address himself to his Lord. A sick person prays to God in the fixed form of the healer, not in a general or vague way. Similar to this, a sinner prays to the all-forgiving in order to receive divine forgiveness, and anyone seeking something makes a prayer to the giver. God is the Lord of the specific man who prays with specific intent under either of that and other similar names. Thus, according to al Qashani, the Lord is the essence taken with particular attribute through which the man who prays obtains what he needs. As a result, it is the most appropriate divine name for the situation that leads a person to address God out of all the divine names. Because of this, Noah refers to my Lord in the Quranic verse quoted above. In this context, the term Lordship Rupupia, refers to man's genuine personal relationship with God. It should be noted that this particular relationship also has an ontological foundation. One of the Quranic verses addresses this matter. He was pleasing unto his Lord. However, if we interpret the phrase his Lord in the specific sense that Ibn Arabi does, we must concede that all living things, not just Ishmael, is pleasing unto their Lord. According to Ibn Arabi, the happy person is the one whose Lord is pleased with him. And there is none but that who is pleasing in the eyes of his Lord, because Lordship applies to everyone. Hence the Lord finds everyone pleasing, and so everyone is happy. Every existence is pleasing to his Lord. If every existence is pleasing to his Lord, as we have explained, it is not necessary that it be pleasing to a Lord of another servant, for he took the Lordship only from one Lord, not from many. What was established for him from all the lords is only that which fits him, and this what is suited to him is his lord. It must be noted that Ibn Arabi has clearly shifted his interest to the ontological aspect of the issue, and is no longer discussing the personal relationship between man and his lord established by the act of prayer and supplication. There is in fact an ontological component to the relationship between each particular being and his Lord. Indeed, each specific name is considered by Ibn Arabi to represent a particular aspect of Al-Haq in the phenomenon of prayer. But to become actual, each specific name necessitates each particular being in which that being becomes a locus of the manifestation of that name. And in this situation, on the ontological level, each particular being continues to have the same individual relationship with Al-Haq like in the context of prayer, because it serves as a locus for the manifestation of a specific name. Therefore, it can be said that each unique being or thing chooses only one name from amongst many, and that name acts as his or her lord at that specific moment. By expressing the same idea from the opposite perspective, it as the total unity of the names, we can say that it never occurs for Ahak to manifest himself in any being as it is in original unity. Ibn Arabi asserts, no one takes from God something which relates to his unity. For this reason, the people of God were prevented from the manifestation of God's unity. That is because if you look at him through him, it is he who looks at himself. And he always looks at himself through himself. And if you look at him through yourself, his unity disappears through yourself. 
and if you look at him through himself and through yourself, unity also disappears. No single being can become the locus of al haq on the level of unity because it is a synthesis of all names. The unity of the names can only be actualized as an ontological counterpart by the cosmos as a whole. Ibn Arabi though does appear to acknowledge one exceptional case. The perfect man is the exception. In contrast to ordinary man, the perfect man actualizes and manifests not just one specific name but all of the synthesis of all names. A man is pleasing unto or approved by his particular lord, not the lord of other men, so that, unlike the perfect man, no ordinary man can have a direct relationship with the absolute lord. The phrase, the absolute lord, refers to the Quranic phrase, Praise be to God, lord of the world. So the fact that all the names in their original unity can never be actualized in one particular is the same as saying that Allah, God, as such, cannot simply be the rob of one particular being. Quote, know that the object called God is one with respect to actions and all with respect to names. Each existence has from God only a single Lord, and it is inconceivable for it to have all the Lords. As for God's unity, no single entity enters it, for one cannot call part of it a thing and another a thing, for it doesn't admit division. Ibn Arabi also explains the interdependence of each being and its lord. On the one hand, each being is essentially dependent on its lord for its existence, and on the other hand, the lord depends on the receptive ability of every being. In short, the lord can never be a lord without there being someone to be loaded over. Ibn Arabi explains, Sahal said, Lordship has a mystery and it is you. Ego, Sahal saying, refers to every entity. If it had disappeared, the lordship would also have been cancelled. The words, if it had disappeared, signify the impossibility of the impossibility. For the condition will not appear and hence the lordship will not be annulled. Because an entity is existent only through its lord. Since an entity is always existent, its lordship will never be cancelled. al Qashani elucidates this matter very clearly. Rob is properly a relative term and necessarily requires its object, Marpub, the one who is loaded over. The word Rob in Arabic is used in three senses. Possessor, e.g. Robutar, the possessor of the house. Robul Ghanam, the possessor of the cattle, etc. Master, e.g. Robul Qawm, the master of the people. Robul Ambit, the master of the slaves, etc. One who brings up, e.g. Robul Sobi, the one who brings up the boy. Rabbutifal, one who brings up the infants, etc. The word Rob is not applicable in the non-relative sense except to the Lord of the whole cosmos. In this case, we say a Rob with a definite article without mentioning the object of Lordship. The Abba is meant Allah alone and to him belongs in an essential way the Lordship in the three meanings distinguished above. Well, to anybody other than Allah, the Lordship belongs only accidentally. For other than Allah is but locus in which it is manifested. Thus, Lordship is an attribute probably belonging to one single thing but appearing in many forms as relative lordships. Everybody in whom it is manifested possesses an accidental lordship in accordance with the decree to which he is given the power of free disposal which he may exercise over his possessions, slaves or children. Since the attributes of lordship differs from locus to locus in its self-manifestation, there necessarily arise a number of decrees. Thus, he who has been given a stronger control over his possessions than others has naturally a higher lordship. So in Ibn Arabi's viewpoint, there are two ways to think about the lord, on the absolute level and on the relative level. On the absolute level, the lord is Allah, but on the relative level, the lord is a particular being and is an actualized form of a specific name. Hence, we can see that in order to exercise the lordship, the lord, whether absolute or relative, essentially needs an object. In other words, the rob cannot exist without marpoop. And even if the lord in question is none other than God, this notion still holds true. It means the existence of Rob cannot be self-sufficient. As far as we are aware, only the divine essence or al haq in his absoluteness is the one who is self-sufficient. Quote, the divine names are identical to the entity named, that is God. 
These names require the realities they bestow, and the realities which they require are not but the cosmos. Divinity requires worshippers, while lordship requires servanthood, because the essence of both divinity and lordship depends on worshippers and servanthood for its concrete and assumed existence. However, al haq with respect to his essence, needs nothing. Whereas in contrast to lordship, this notion, the essence doesn't apply. Thus, the matter remains as something between what lordship requires and what the essence deserves. That is, it's dispensing with the cosmos. Truly, lordship is identical with the essence. This enables us to understand that the lord is none other than the essence, that which is thought to carry a variety of relations. However, we must remember that these relations are not actual beings that exist in the divine essence. Ibn Arabi distinguishes between lordship and divinity in that passage. According to al Ghoshani, the divinity signifies the presence or ontological plane of the divine names, that is, of the names belonging al Haq as God. al Haq as God is the object of adoration, devotion, awe, fear, prayer, and submission on the part of the creatures. Where the Lordship is the presence of actions, it has the plane of the divine names that are precisely concerned with al Haq's actions in sustaining, administering, and controlling the affairs of all creatures. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.